Hey everyone, this is Megan. Uh, this is the first of what I'm cautiously but ambitiously hoping will be many videos about life with a disability, about working as a woman in a STEM field in rural Maine with a disability, and also about the journey that is service dog training with my service dog in training, Maisie, who you'll get to know in this video a little bit. I don't want to commit myself to a timetable because I have a lot going on and I'm juggling a lot. But I am planning on getting an intro type video up in not too long, so keep an eye out for that if you don't already know me. I'm assuming most of you are coming from my Facebook and do know me, but maybe just show me some grace as I figure this whole thing out. This video you're watching now is an introduction and high-level overview of what shaping is in dog training, how it's done, what it's for. I want to preface it by saying I'm not a professional trainer. I'm learning as I go, so be patient with me, and I will take you on a ride. So shaping or free shaping is the technique that I've actually used to teach all of Maisie's cues from sit, down, uh, picking up a toy, picking up something I've dropped, opening the door, closing a cabinet, pretty much all of the non-basic obedience things I've taught her using shaping, which is essentially just teaching your dog to think about what you may be asking from them and rewarding it in small chunks until you get to that final goal. So what you're going to do before you start is for you, obviously, to bend down and pick up a pencil is one smooth movement. And you don't think about the different steps in it, but what you're going to do is break it up for your dog and reward each little step so that the closer you get, the closer they are and the more reward they get. So for example, as I have listed here on the slide, Right now what I'm trying to do in the next little clip that you're going to see is I'm asking Maisie to touch her nose and push on the pink sticky note that I put at the end of a paint stick. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reward her a couple of times for just looking at the sticky note. I want her brain to think about the sticky note. I want her to know that that's kind of what it is that all the treats are going to come from for this next little bit of time that I'm working with her. Um, when she's really kind of doing that reliably, I'll hold out treats for a little bit, hold out rewarding until she's moving towards the sticky note or moving her body towards it, leaning towards it. Something that shows me she's going a little bit further and as soon as she does that, then I'll give her her treat. And I pretty much just do that all the way up from, you know, moving towards the sticky and then once she finally touches her nose to the sticky, I'm gonna give her all kinds of treats. We call it a jackpot and it's gonna be like the most fun thing that she's ever done. A lot of your dog's favorite treats um, and shaping, I wouldn't necessarily do something as distracting as say a toy reward but petting scratching getting super excited all acceptable all great you know your dog best and eventually after a couple sessions it depends on the dog um for Maisie very, she's usually pretty quick in one or two sessions I can kind of get her to nail it down um this one is one of the more difficult things that I've taught her just because she wants to chew the stick and not just touch it so we're kind of problem solving there but after a couple sessions, your dog's really going to get it. And then at the very end, that's when you add the cute word. So you're not going to want to say touch at the beginning and then wait for your dog to make these movements. You're going to wait. You're going to build and shape this behavior. And then at the end, once they've really got it, then you'll start saying the cue, touch, and then wait for them to create that chain of actions again. So one thing that's really important to note is that the length of the free shaping sessions, as well as the number of sessions per day and how long it's going to take your dog to learn this new behavior is going to depend on a lot of things. It's going to depend on um, maybe you and your dog are both new to this. It's going to depend on how old your dog is, the breed, the temperament. Is it a dog that just loves to work and gets really excited about it? Maybe your dog's a breed that's more high drive but gets really bored with repeated activities. So that might take a little bit longer because you'll do shorter sessions. There is necessarily no right or wrong, um, it's whatever works best for you guys. Most importantly, keep these sessions light, keep them fun, keep them exciting. When you notice your dog's disengaging, it might be time to kind of end on something easy, do a big jackpot, lots of treats, and then do something fun with them. Keep it exciting, keep it something that your dog's looking forward to. If you have a dog that's getting really frustrated with not knowing what you're asking or maybe just getting bored, you're not going to make a lot of progress and you're going to end up frustrating both of you even more. So just call the session quits, end it, done, not a big deal. Everybody's happy, move on.
So personally in my head, I divide each session up into about three sections or phases. It's nothing technical, it's kind of just something I do so that I can keep track of the time, keep track of where I'm going, get myself a little bit of a map. So with Maisie, because she's so young and she's very excited, the first one or two minutes of every session is basically just about getting her to focus. We have a lot going on in our house, we have other animals, my boyfriend's usually up doing stuff, so it's really hard for her to sit and focus and kind of think about what's coming next. So the first minute or two, I'll just treat her for looking at me, treat her for focus, kind of give her some soft corrections to come back to me. Um, typically, when you're shaping, you don't want to give a lot of corrections. You want your dog to figure it out for yourself. Um, but Maisie is super flighty. She doesn't really stay super focused if she's not reminded. So I will give her a little bit of a correction, just a note or hey, come back um, to get her back on the right track. So in this next section, what you're going to see is that by the end of it, she's figured out two things. She knows that we're shaping and she should start thinking and kind of offering behaviors. And you're also going to see that she's realizing that whatever it is, she doesn't know exactly what I'm asking, but she knows that it's related to the stick in my hand. So I don't care where she's touching. I don't care if she's biting it at this point. I'm just going to reward her for anything that she's giving me because I want to get her right on the right track so that the rest of the session goes smoothly. Oh, I lied her. He's okay. He's just sad because he's not getting kibbles. Yes! So in my brain, this next session here, phase two, is what I call the refining. And that's where you take this dog who's now focused, ready to work, knows that they're supposed to be thinking. You take that and you start to work the behavior towards what it is your end goal. Um, so in this case, it's touching the sticky note and touching it and pushing it, not biting at it, not pulling. Um, for you, if you're trying to train your dog to go maybe spin in a circle, that's going to be your dog looking slightly in one direction, shifting their weight, something that shows you they kind of know where they're going. So after a couple minutes, Maisie's no longer distracted by what's going on around her. Um, and after the first couple times that she's looking at the stick, I wait a little bit longer to use my marker word, which is yes in this case. So yes means that, yep, you're doing what I wanted. I'm going to give you a treat because that was the goal. So now I'm going to become a little bit pickier with using my marker word and rewarding her. At the beginning, I was rewarding even when she was biting, even though that wasn't our end goal, because it meant that she was moving in the right direction and kind of knew what I was looking for. Here, if she's biting at the stick, I'm going to hold out a little bit longer and wait until she just touches it with her nose. At that point, I'll say, yes, I'll make a big deal, give her a treat, and then wait for her to do it again. If she starts biting, I am going to correct her just a little bit. Uh, nope, off. Off is our word for it. Just stop whatever you're doing and start thinking kind of another direction. So now what I'm doing is, even though I'm holding back and giving fewer rewards, when she does something that I'm desiring, like, example, touching her nose directly to the sticky note, either by accident or on purpose, I'm going to do a huge jackpot, make a big deal out of it, so that she knows that touching her nose to that is the key to whatever's in my treat bag. Yes! Good job. Good job.
Yes. So the reason I use these sticky notes is because I can carry them in my purse or her bag. That's true. And when we go to like PT to do the button, we can practice with that. That's true. That's a good idea. And awesome. Sounds like a Disney princess. Kelly, you're a Disney princess. The line. Mm. Yes. So that last phase, phase two, is where the majority of the meat of the training session is. It's where you're going to get the most improvement, the most movement towards the end goal. This next piece that you're going to see is what I consider the wrap up. It's where we start closing down, start shutting off. I kind of see that she's getting frustrated, not really knowing what I'm wanting from her, and we're no longer making progress. We're just getting frustrated with each other. So this is where I look for her to give me one final good run at the behavior I'm looking for. Um, for example, in this next slide that you're going to see, this next clip, um, I can see her yawning and she starts barking. Um, she kind of gives me a heel, which I didn't ask for. So I can see that she's sort of reaching the end of her time with me, um, and I need to stop before it gets too much worse. So now that I see this, I'm going to wait for her to do anything that's remotely what I wanted her to do, whether that's back to the beginning where she was biting at the stick, and I'm still going to say, yes, give her some treats, all done, we're done. Um, and this one, after she did bark and I kind of calmed her down, she was able to give me another touch with her nose, the sticky note, which is great. So I did that. We treated, yes, reward, all kinds of treats, all done, and then we're both done. We ended on a good note, um, which I like to do when I can. Not always possible, but it's really important that you're watching your dog and your dog's body language. Because if your dog is yawning and telling you, okay, I'm stressed, I'm getting frustrated, I can't give you what you want, um, you're both going to have a really bad time coming into future training sessions and then setting you up to be stressed, which isn't great for either of you. Off. Easy. No, ma'am. Off. It's okay. Down. Break. One more time for me. Off. It's okay. That's okay. Yes. I needed something because she's getting dizzy. And when she gets frustrated, she goes, mm, no, go for me. One more. I'll do a real one. Off. Yes. Good girl. All right, all done. Good girl. Alexa, stop timer. 15 minute timer canceled. Okay, so overall, this session ran about 15 minutes. I only showed you guys a few clips. Um, it's pretty boring, pretty repetitive to watch, not much of a spectator sport. So mm -hmm. in 15 minutes, Maisie was able to figure out that she had to do something with the stick in my hand, no matter what it was. Um, she was able to figure out that touching the sticky you note know, got her a lot of treats, a lot of reward, and then biting it ended up getting her nothing toward the end. So she really was tying those together. Um, like I said, this is one of the harder things for her because she is very mouthy. Anything you put in front of her, she wants to bite it. Fingers, clothes, socks. So I knew this was going to be a little bit of a challenge for her, but it's something that in the future I hope to be able to use to teach her to do things like push handicap door access buttons or push on a cupboard or a door to close it for me. Um, it can be kind of transferred now that she knows what the sticky note means. Um, probably another session or two, she'll have it pretty solid and I'll start adding a cue. 
So next session, I'll probably need to spend less time in the beginning, pointing her toward the stick, probably one or two treat rewarded treats. She'll probably have it figured out. Um, I do want to remind you guys, train the dog in front of you. If you're not training Maisie, you're not training Joey in my house, you're training whoever's in front of you. So maybe they can move a little bit quicker and they don't need as much reinforcement. Maybe you have to take a couple of shorter sessions instead of one 15-minute session. Do five-minute, quick, short sessions, um, whatever works for you. Um, and I'd love to hear what you thought of this video. Thanks so much.